Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. The world could run out of food. According to projections by the United Nations, our current agricultural system cannot adequately sustain 9 billion people. And that's how many are expected to be on Earth in just 30 years. Protein requires the most resources to produce. That makes it the biggest challenge for the Earthlings of 2015, 2050. St. Louis resident Sarah Schlafly wants to address that problem. That's why she started Mighty Cricket. It's a startup that makes food products, including powdered roasted crickets. This month's Schlafly challenged restaurants across the city to incorporate cricket powder into their menus, and nearly 40 signed on. Diners are, well, they're giving it a try. Our intern, Tonina Saputo, visited several participating businesses, Fiddleherd, Fiddlehead Fern Cafe, where they have mighty cricket protein balls, and Hello Juice and Smoothie. She talked with employees and patrons about whether they were open to eating things that were made with cricket powder. So I have tried cricket powder and I actually put it in my smoothie bowls when I come in here um, since we've received it. It doesn't really taste any different to me in the actual smoothie but outside of the smoothie it kind of tastes like um, a roasted almond. Personally I would not eat crickets just because I eat a plant-based diet but for people that would probably consume it to me that's a little gross just because you know they're bugs, but then if you think about it, like animals are out in the wild, bugs are out in the wild, people eat animals, so I mean, I guess it's a valid point. Why wouldn't people eat bugs too? Uh, I have eaten crickets. I've never had cricket powder, um, and I've not had crickets in the United States, but I've had them overseas. It was like a snack, like a fried snack. Um, they were crunchy and they weren't bad. They tasted like chips. I'm not opposed to it. I would probably be more likely to try a cricket powder because I once ordered grasshopper tacos somewhere and seeing the legs freaked me out a little bit. I am very open to all foods. I love food, but yeah, powder would be easier for me. What do you think about it becoming mainstream in the United States, becoming a part of people's diets regularly? I think it probably should, considering it takes less water to produce cricket protein than it does to produce other types of protein, uh, which is good for the environment, which is great, because in 30 to 50 years, if we don't do something, we're out of here. So, I mean, sustainability is, is important. I think it's, I mean, from what I know about it, it's a great source of protein, and it's really cheap, and it's super sustainable. So I don't see anything wrong with it. Joining me to talk about the St. Louis Cricket Challenge is Mighty Cricket CEO Sarah Schlafly. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Now, for those of you listening, are you ready to give crickets a try? Give us a call at 314-382-8255. That's 382-TALK. What? No one wants to talk about this? That's a cricket joke, y'all. You can also send us a tweet at STL on air or email us at talk at stlpublicradio.org. Now, Sarah Schlafly, what first got you interested in crickets? Really, the inspiration came when I first had my daughter. I thought about when my daughter is my age, is she going to have access to protein, clean protein? And really, today, we're already struggling with getting access to good quality protein. Uh, we're... Americans are consuming sick animals, and I was getting fed up with it. So I thought, you know, when she um, enters the world as an adult, I want this industry to be full-fledged uh, here in the U.S. so that we can really drive down the costs of a clean protein source and make it available to everyone. Now, I feel like a, people who care about the environment or are worried about world hunger, they might have that thought. But not everybody who has that thought goes out and starts creating cricket products. How do you get from that idea to saying, yeah, I've come up with a, a cricket source and I'm turning crickets into powder? And I mean, there must have been a lot that went into trying to get to the point that you're at. 
It was five years in the making. I have a background in food. My I've spent the past 10 years in the food industry, and I've also was a prior entrepreneur. So I was already accustomed to the whole idea of startup, uh, grinding it out, the hustle. And so it wasn't as big of a leap for me as perhaps some other people. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely been quite the evolution. So where do you get your crickets? I source from directly from Cricket Farms, and there are farms. There all... are farms of crickets. Yes, yeah. That's... What does that look like? I mean, is it just row after row of, of crickets in a, a tube, or how does it work? There are a few different farm models. Um, most, most of the farms have their crickets in Tupperware containers in rows. Um, but there, there is an innovative farm that has all the crickets free range in a giant warehouse, and they're all hopping around. That must be quite a warehouse. Did you get to visit? I haven't visited that one yet. That one's in Canada. Okay. So free range crickets, yeah. or crickets sort of being farmed in a more traditional a Tupperware bowl. Yeah. It's basically just like a giant Tupperware container with um, some egg cartons or something thrown in so that they have plenty of space to hop around. And then when you get these crickets, are they already powder at that point or you're turning them into powder? I do. I've experimented with both. So I'm still working on the process of really figuring out how I'm going to drive down the cost of these crickets. Um, Crickets can be pricey? Yeah. Right now the industry is so niche and we Mm -hmm. haven't had efficiencies uh, that have taken place on these farms. So just now it's really exciting. These farmers are starting to put automated practices into the farming. And I think that in the next few years, the cost of these crickets are really going to be drained down. And part of that is um, me playing a role in helping build the demand. That makes sense. And I know that's part of what this challenge is about. We've got our callers seem to have a number of questions about crickets. It's it's not just crickets out there. All right. To continue my terrible pun here, uh, that's courtesy of our executive producer, Alex Hoyer, for the record. Um, But yeah, let's go to the phone lines. Abby calling from Edwardsville. Hi, you're on St. Louis on the Air. Hi, how are you guys? Thank you for joining us. Um, What are your thoughts on crickets? Um, Well, I've never personally tried them, but I was really interested. I wanted to call in and ask, what is the protein content of cricket powder or crickets in general? You know, if people are making an argument because there's always an argument about (laughs) what you're eating, how much would you have to consume to, you know, have a healthy protein intake? Abby, that's a great question. Sarah Schlafly, do you have an answer? Yes. Our powder, Abby, is 68% protein. So in two tablespoons of powder, you get 10 grams of protein, but you also get 100% of your daily vitamin B12, and that's your energy vitamin. So that's really exciting. It's a hard one to find in plant-based proteins. Um, okay. Abby, so well, that answered your question, Abby? It does. It's interesting to me because I've never considered crickets as a source of protein, let alone any other bug. And so, I mean, people are always looking for protein alternatives, especially if you don't eat meat, Mm -hmm. but you're open to eating insects. So yeah, that uh, that answers. Great. Well, thank you so much for that call, Abby. Um, Let's talk to Linda calling from St. Louis. Linda, hi, you're on St. Louis on the air. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Um, I've long heard that crickets were high in protein, but I have to tell you, and maybe because I'm an older person, <laughs> there wouldn't be any way I'm eating crickets. Never. Um, you wouldn't even consider no, it, Linda? I think it's, I think it's the visual. I think knowing that these are the things that I kill in my house, that I listen to in the summer, um, they have in, they have wings, they have legs, they have um, all of that would totally turn me off because it's not just what I'm eating, it's visualizing what I'm eating. Um, and Linda... But- We get that a lot. Um, That's why we are so adamant about keeping it powdered. And once the aroma of the powder is quite mild, and then when you see it blended into soup, like at Squires, their tomato bisque, or the cup is featuring a Mighty Cricket cupcake, all of a sudden it goes from something that is a foreign ingredient to 
to a dish that you're quite accustomed to looking at. So it makes it a lot easier to try. Sarah, Linda had mentioned some particular parts of the cricket that just kind of freak her out to think about. Do you process the entire insect, grind it all up, or just we parts? We do, oh, yeah. Wow. Which so the feelers it... are going in there, the legs are going in there. Yes, but it, it, it's what makes it so sustainable is that nothing's wasted. Linda, um, I, I'm afraid to ask, are you convinced by this argument? Or are you still not ready to give crickets a try? Um, I think that having a powder, something that, you know, is not, you know, I know there are people that will fry them or coat them in chocolate. Things like that are just a, absolutely a no-go. But I think having a, a powder, um, as long as it doesn't change the taste of my soup or my food or whatever I'm putting it in and I'm looking for extra protein, um, I definitely would be open to that. Um, but I wouldn't say that's something I'm going to seek out. I probably, <laughs> continue, I probably will continue to get my protein through regular meat sources. I um, understand. Linda, that's totally right. fair. Thank you so much for your call today. We appreciate it. Um, John, calling from Alton. Hi, you're on St. Louis on the Air. Hi. Um, so I was just wondering um, whether or not the powdered cricket protein that um, you're making for your restaurants um, if you have a plan to make that commercially available in grocery stores? That's another good question. Um, Sarah Schlafly, what's what are your plans on that yes, front? Yes, we are in a few grocery stores. We have um, we have a line of the powders, a line of oatmeals, and then pancake mix. We are available at cricketcereal.com on Amazon. And then a couple of major retailers are starting to evaluate our products. So it would be super helpful if you go into your local stores and ask if they're serving Mighty or they're um, selling Mighty Cricket protein yet. There's a, a little commercial from the CEO of right. Mighty Cricket, but you know, it is hard to get the word out. You can't blame, can't blame you for hustling. Um, John, thank you for that call. Um, Eric, our phone lines are just, um, we've got a lot of people interested in this subject, which I guess means the challenge is, is doing what it should do. Let's talk to Eric calling from Webster Groves. Eric, um, hi, you're on St. Louis on the air. Hi, um, as a um, usually vegetarian, um, often vegan, I am always surprised to see protein being um, asserted as being the center of the diet. Where I've, I've read lots of scientific research that says that Americans get way too much protein, hmm. that even vegans get 70, 70% more protein than they need if they eat a variety of foods. So I just wonder why the premise of this is that we need more protein, that we need a source of protein. When actually that is what I understand is, is not necessarily the case. Eric, that's a really interesting question. I got to say, I'm not an expert in this at all. Um, I'm sure that those of us who are eating steak and chicken, we, we probably are getting too many proteins. Um, but Sarah Schlafly, any thoughts on what Eric is raising here? Yeah, people have different goals. So um, some bodybuilders, they're doing protein supplements so that they can continue to grow. People who are vegans, um, I, I do have vegans who eat the product because they it, it's not just about protein, it's about other nutrients, the vitamin B12 I mentioned, omega-3 fatty acids, um, but it, it's just an ultra-sustainable food source. So whether you're supplementing your diet with um, the cricket powder for protein or just to become more sustainable, it's a really great option for people. And there are 2 billion people across 80% of the world's countries who already consume insects. Now, it's, um, thank you so much for that call, Eric. I, I think you raised a, a good question there. Um, Sarah, you mentioned earlier that you're hoping that the price of crickets is going to come down since it is currently still a, a niche business. What is currently the cost of this powder as a consumer? And, and how would you expect to see that change if you could? Right. Yeah, so uh, for a half pound of cricket powder, we retail that for... Uh, around twenty five dollars. And is a half pound a lot? Like, is that would that get you through how many meals? Say, I know it depends on the recipe, but just I just have no concept of cricket volume. Right. Yeah, a little bit goes a long way. So, um, like I said, a serving is we recommend two tablespoons and a half pound. That would be um, sixteen tablespoons. 16, 16 servings. Okay, so sixteen servings are going to get you um, about twenty five dollars at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not cheap, but it's certainly cheaper than a lot of meat that we eat. Right. Yeah. It, it hovers around. If, if you break down the uh, cost per serving, it's a little over a dollar, I believe. Okay.
um, we've just got a very little bit amount of time here. Um, I did want to ask, though, for these crickets that you're using, do we have any sense of, of whether crickets suffer, whether they have brains, all these things we worry about with animals? I know you've talked about vegans using your product. Um, what's the life of a cricket? Well, I work with uh, entomologists at the Butterfly House and uh, around the U.S. And what they've told me is that crickets, um, their pain receptors are little to none, and they're very robotic, so they don't have an emotional attachment to the young. In fact, they often eat each other. Oh, wow. Okay. So So maybe we should feel okay about eating them. (laughs) Yeah, and then the way they're harvested is they're put in their state of torpor, which is a type of hibernation. So they basically die in their sleep, and that's what happens in the wild. And so it's a very humane way of raising and harvesting crickets. That's Sarah Schlafly, the CEO of Mighty Cricket. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, please join us tonight. It's a special edition of St. Louis on the Air being recorded uh, at 7 p.m. right here in Grand Center. NPR's Silicon Valley correspondent, Arthi Shahani, has a new memoir, Here We Are, and we'll be discussing it. It's a free event. We ask that you register in advance. You can do that on our website, stlpublicradio.org slash events. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio 90.7 KWMU. Thank you for listening. I'm Sarah Fenske. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. The Gateway brings you the day's news from the St. Louis region and across Missouri. It also includes stories from the Illinois side of the river and our Metro East reporter, Will Bauer. In Alton, in Belleville, in East St. Louis, in Edwardsville, in Cahokia Heights, at Scott Air Force Base, I'm Will Bauer, St. Louis Public Radio. Listen to reports from Will and all of our journalists weekdays on The Gateway, on the STLPR app, and wherever you get podcasts.